So here's a Dragon Board 410. Here are the Colcom booth. And uh, who are you? Yeah, so my name is Leon Farosetti. I'm uh, from Qualcomm. I'm actually from our Snapdragon for Embedded Computing team. So uh, we're the team behind the Dragon Board 410C. And uh, you know, this is obviously a development board, but the idea is that this enables Snapdragon going into uh, all sorts of embedded devices, um, anywhere from you know drones and robots to uh, medical devices to uh, uh, you know computing, any 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 device that requires intelligence. Uh, Snapdragon is obviously a great processor, and now you have a way to start prototyping um, for. Uh, for all sorts of applications. So Dragon Board is your starting point. Um, you're gonna see later on in, uh, in our booth here at TechCrunch, uh, we've invited uh, what we call our Snapdragon technology providers. So if you wanna go uh, f uh, beyond your prototyping and development, they have these uh, commercial SOMs, so system on modules, or commercial single board computers that you can actually use in a real product and go to market. So here we're at uh, TechCrunch Disrupt, there's lots of uh, startups around here uh, doing all kinds of crazy startup stuff. So this is a big deal. Yes, I it mean, is. Uh, th this is 64-bit ARM, uh, affordable, Yes. and a lot of open source around it, right? This is huge. I think um, if you look at some of the other solutions that are available out there, um, you, you won't find anything that integrates this level of processing power. So like you said, you have 64-bit uh, quad-core uh, running at 1.2 gigahertz per core. Uh, but, I, but I think more importantly, you have the combination of processing and connectivity. So this board uses uh, Snapdragon 410, which has integrated Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. So now you have a board at $75 that gives you all of that. It gives you the processing, gives you the connectivity, um, and also gives you a lot of expandability. So um, what kind of expandability? Like this is a the 96 board. This standard? is 96 board. So uh, we've been working with Lenaro, um, which is uh, the Linux on ARM uh, organization, on uh, creating uh, obviously Linux on Snapdragon, and they're working on upstreaming Linux. Um, and uh, Lenaro. Uh, they, they saw a gap in the market for, um, uh, for you know, these open source boards that have uh, capability beyond just kind of low speed, low level stuff. So Leonardo created this uh, new open source standard called 96 boards. And the idea with this is, um, in, as you see, there's actually two expansion connectors on this board. This is a low speed expansion connector, something you see in you know, our boards like Arduino or uh, Raspberry Pi. But more importantly, you have another expansion connector here, which is a high speed connector. This is, is it a standard? Uh, this is now a, a standard. So uh, besides the Dragon board, there's now going to be other boards that are going to use the standard. And the beauty of that is there's going to be a number of what they call mezzanine cards that uh, will go on top of this board uh, and give you additional capability, like uh, uh, multiple sensors that you can attach to this board, um, like a robotics kit that you can use for controlling motors and those type of things. So there's gonna be a number of these types of mezzanine cards that are gonna be available to the community for 96 boards, including Dragon Ball 410C. So this is coming to the market, uh, mass production is happening very soon, right? For the Dragon Ball 410C, yeah. it's already out. It's actually available through uh, Aero Electronics. Um, they uh, launched this a few months ago, and initially the demand was way more than supply. Uh, so there was, you know, a bit of a delay in, in uh, getting the boards. Uh, getting a bigger quantity, maybe. Yes. Yeah, so now they're they're into that bigger quantities. Uh, so starting in a, about a few weeks is where uh, it's going to be widely available uh, beyond the initial. Quantities. And a very good price. Yes. Yeah, so. I think what's really impressive about this is you have all of this, uh, you know, uh, on this board for $75, which, you know, for, for this level of capability and with onboard connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, I think this is phenomenal. I don't think there's anything like it on the market. This is just the beginning. Uh, I'm hoping that this is going to be so huge that uh, maybe you can even consider using a whole bunch of other future processors and having this form factor too, and yes. people can just swap in, swap out, and get to even more? Great question. So, um, Snapdragon 410 is a processor that we've designated for embedded. It's kind of our um, you know, mid-level uh, processor. We also have a Snapdragon 600, 
which is a higher end processor. Um, it has more capability in uh, CPU power and GPU, it has a programmable DSP. Uh, so I can't announce future products, but you can imagine the 600 could, could have something like this. Uh, and, and as we uh, expand this program, uh, we might be even looking at uh, processors in uh, you know, higher tiers that we're going to add to this program. So Especially if it's a huge success and if all the developers are doing crazy robots with it and drones yes. and yeah. can you imagine what's going to happen in, within a year? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, I think this is even going to go beyond imagination. I mean, some of the things that people are doing with this are things that we never even thought of. I mean, they are creating uh, medical equipment using this. They're creating, uh, you know, uh, the, some type of drones that uh, you know you, you you know you can't even think of right now um, in in robotics and drones uh, digital signage so type of things that people are creating is to me uh, I mean it's beyond beyond imagination These but but I can imagine what people can do with this um, at this at this price point and also community supported I think this is really all about community is getting a number of developers around this who are going to collaborate. So if you are a developer and you run into something that you know you don't know how to solve, the beauty of this is you can go to the community and you can uh, you know get their uh, engagement to to maybe solve your problem. Nice, and you can run Android. You can also have a, you have open source GPU. There's yep. a free Drino running here. This is a huge deal for. It is. It is for. Uh, you know, it's interesting. So uh, we're a TechCrunch uh, disrupt. Um, about uh, at the same time this week, there's another conference that we're part of. It's called Lenaro Connect, and uh, this is a conference for all the Lenaro developers uh, that are doing uh, Linux on ARM. And one of the things that everybody talked about is uh, the level of open source, um, both in terms of hardware and software, that has happened in um, the mobile SOC space. I mean, this is unheard of. Uh, what the the Linux, uh, the Ubuntu Linux that you can run on this. I mean, the the uh, you know you have the GPU support, but just the the stability of it, the number of features, and it's been growing at a crazy pace. So yes, you can. Um, this obviously runs Android. Um, it uh, runs uh, the uh, Ubuntu Linux from Lenaro, developed by Lenaro, um, and we've also announced in in very near future, uh, it's also going to have Windows 10 support. That's amazing. Yeah. Windows yeah. 10. Quad core, 64 bit ARM. I mean, it's it, isn't that isn't that something? 75 dollars. Maybe people will have to pay for Windows. We'll see. Uh, I I mean I can't Dep comment. Maybe on there's that. a developer version. But uh, let, let's let's sure, go over yeah. there. Yeah. So uh, I mean, and, and what we're showing here, I mean, you saw on the TV. This is a uh, you know standard game uh, from from kind of the Android space that uh, you would usually see running on a high end mobile device, and now. Uh, you know, with this, imagine just the level of graphics capability that you're bringing into other things beyond mobile. So, I mean, this is a tennis game. Um, you know, what I, what I like about this is it kind of shows you that you have that same level of mobile, uh, you know, performance now into other devices at such a low price point. So, um, that's a demo. I mean, there's so many other so things. It has picture. a Great GPU, it has a DSP also. Yes, yes. And the DSP, what will people do with that? Um, DSPs, uh, you know, you have, uh, they're very low power. So um, we've done a lot of things around uh, some audio technologies on the DSP. So if you guys, uh, you know, remember when you say, uh, you know, call your phone and it's always listening. That's nice. the type of alg algorithm you can put on the DSP and have it running all the time. So, so the robot is always listening to you. Could be. And you or your sensors. Voice command and it will just activate. Yep. And bring oh. you the food. There you go. Or a lot of times, a lot of times uh, you're always listening um, to your sensors. You know, um, your motion sensors. So you know something. So for contextual awareness, you want to know um, you have a gadget or you have something where you want to know where it is, and you're always uh, running sensors. Now you don't want the sensors to be running on your full full-on, you know, quad-core CPU, so you would run it on something like a low-power DSP. Is that easy enough for the developers to uh, heterogeneously just target only the DSP for some stuff and the CPU for some other stuff? Yeah, so we Are have you going to help them with that? Yeah, we have a program for developers. Uh, it's called Hexagon DSP. Um, there's an access program where you can uh, sign up and uh, you get, you know, access to SDKs and documentation on how to use the DSP. Um, and we're working on a number of things around that. 
Uh, but yes, so the idea is that we want developers to be able to use our CPU, um, be able to use the GPU as well as the DSP. So this is the whole concept of heterogeneous computing. You want to use the right core for the, for the type of application so you get the optimal performance and power efficiency. Nice. Uh, really looking forward to uh, like a TechCrunch Disrupt kind of a, a conference just for all the startups coming out of this board. Yeah, I mean, we... Uh, 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 we were here f during the weekend, they had the hackathon, and uh, we uh, gave out um, f more than 50 of these kits. And uh, the kit was a Dragon Ball 410C, there was a camera in there, there was a bunch of sensors, so it was a full-on kit. And we had uh, these teams who created some amazing things using this, um, you know... How many hours did they spend? Well, it was a two-day event. Two two-day event. Two event, and they were hacking for two days? And they already did a bunch of stuff. They already did a bunch of stuff. And I was walking around, um, so today is a hardware day here, and there's a hardware alley. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you've, you've been around there yeah. yet, but uh, I saw so many things that could be using this technology. And you know, some of these guys are saying, look, you know, in the past we were looking at uh, something like Snapdragon. It's an amazing processor, but we didn't know how to use it. Uh, and that's what, that's what we've been trying to solve here, by, by giving them this type of board, and then by also providing these uh, commercial modules from our uh, from our Snapdragon technology providers, who you know who give them that opportunity to now take Snapdragon and integrate it into their device. So, so, so I think you know about a year or so time. I mean, you're right. You're going to potentially see a conference of this size, people using this technology in their products. So they might, in the beginning of the hackathon, have an idea, and at the end, have an investor for the startup. There you go. That's on the a great new idea. hardware. TechCrunch Disrupt Qualcomm Edition. There you go.